Okay. So, so dear Shekha, um, uh, assalamu alaikum. Uh, thank you so alaykum much. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh, brother Hassan. Uh, I'm very, uh, really humbled and honored um, and so uh, pleased to introduce uh, Shekha Fariha Al Jarahi, who is the guide of the Nur Ashki Jarahi Sufi Order. She conducts spiritual and educational meetings for her dervishes uh, in 16 circles around the world. Um, Sheikha Fariha was born in Houston, Texas and currently resides in New York City. At the age of 29, she met Sufi master Sheikh Muzaffar Ozak of Istanbul. Uh, at the master's passing, she became the disciple of Muzaffar's disciple, Sheikh uh, Noor al-Jarahi, who envisioned a radical and illumined path of the heart which he called Universal Islam. After Sheikh Noor's passing in 1995, Sheikh Fariha took on the role of guiding the Noor Ashki Jarahi Sufi order. Uh, Sheikh Fariha holds uh, open prayer circles, which are currently online uh, at the Masjid Al Farah in uh, New York City, as well as various uh, circles throughout the US and Mexico. And um, I wanted to say, by way of a personal note, um, I, I met the Sheikh. Um, formally before returning uh, to the UK uh, early in 2019. And um, uh, the Sheikha very, was, and uh, together with her remarkable community in New York, uh, really welcomed me with incredible uh, openness and, and, and loving kindness. And I was uh, um, very humbled to have been uh, initiated by the Sheikha. And, uh, and I also mentioned to Sheikha before we went, on, uh, went live, that uh, I apologized to her for being a wayward disciple. <laughs> and, 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 and nevertheless, for the Sheikha's incredible generosity of spirit uh, in, in, uh, in, in everything that she does and, uh, and in the way she is towards me. Uh, so for that, I'm extremely grateful. And, and language is a funny thing. I mean, we can say all sorts of things, but not sometimes not get to the heart of, of the matter or the truth of the matter. Um, <laughs> sure. Um, so, dear Shekha, um, I wanted to ask you um, today about, um, about the question of truth um, and the way I, I've sort of titled this, uh, this discussion. Uh, we've titled it The Way of Truth in the Age of Illusions. Um, and I wanted to um, benefit really uh, from your insights uh, and for all of us to benefit from your insights regarding the question of truth. Um, in this day and age, um, it's it's almost um, it's it's a secular blasphemy to speak of truth with a capital T. <laughs> right? It's uh, it, because every age and every context has its blasphemies for all our sort of supposed yeah. uh, liberal maturity or whatever, however it's packaged. Uh, in, in, in any case, dear Sheikha, without going on and on, forgive me. I was hoping you could speak a little bit to the question of truth. What is that? Yes, I'd love to. What, what a wonderful subject to speak of uh, on this day, on this in this morning of Shaban, before the coming of the night of forgiveness, uh, Laylatul Barat, in um, Saturday night. So, uh, first of all, I'd like to begin by greeting um, whoever is joining us in this conversation and and sending you um, the peace of Allah uh, through my heart and into your hearts. And may Allah join us in a, a circle of um, increasing us in, in knowledge and uh, bringing us onto the path of truth, into the truth to become truth. Um, my first uh, Sufi master, Sheikh Muzaffar Ozak said, um, become truth. He said to me, you know, become truth. So uh, it's possible to actually become truth. And, um, but let's begin with the, you know, the universal truth. And, and we know uh, that the sacred traditions um, hold the way to truth. So in the sacred tradition of the, of the Quran and, and the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam of Islam, you know, it is said that um, Allah is true the prophets are true, the Quran is true, the angels, angelic intelligences are true, uh, humanity is true, the last day is true. 
Um, and the good is true, you know, that all comes from, from the good and returns to the good and actually subsists in the good. And so everything is true. We are in the truth already. We're, we're living in the universe of truth. And we know, again, from Quran, and most of my, you know, insights and, and, and talk will be taken from Holy Quran, into which I was initiated by Sheikh Musafir Rahmatullahi. So, um, although I, I revere and love um, other traditions, I was raised also as a Christian, a Catholic, and, and uh, love that, and love Hazrat Isa, but all part of them, Hazrat Maryam, alayhi salam, they're all part of the universal Islam and part of the, the Grand Quran. So um, in the Quran, it does say, and it addresses the, the question to the, to the Rasul, uh, peace be upon him, it says, gaze into the universe, gaze into my creation. And, and then it says, you know, can you find a flaw in my creation? So of course, you know, in our normal states of mind, we'll find many flaws. We, you know, oh, this is wrong, that's wrong, the weather's too hot, the weather's too cold, it's raining, it's no rain. Um, our, our neighbors are making too much noise. Um, the cat is sick, what, many, many, many flaws. But uh, the, the, the sacred creation in the pure creation, seen through the eyes of the pure being of love, there is no flaw. There is no flaw in Allah. There is no flaw in Allah's creation. There is no flaw in Allah's humanity. So that's the path, is to come to that place also where we see no flaw. And then when we see no flaw, that's when we are merged in the truth. Um, so Allah says, take a path to your Lord. So that is part of the perfection. Part of the perfection is also the era, the wandering, uh, the, 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 the grievous mistakes we made, the heedlessness, the, as the Prophet brought these as gifts to Allah on his mirage. You know, the, uh, Allah asked him, his beloved, what have you brought me, my beloved, as a gift? And the beloved responds, I have brought you the, the, the smallness of worship of, of humanity and, and, and their errors and weaknesses. And so then Allah reveals the proportion of divine mercy to human error as a, 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 a tiny piece of, of earth uh, in, the, in the beak of a, a bird sitting on a tree in an infinite ocean of divine mercy. And Allah reveals my mercy to uh, humanity's eras are like uh, the ocean compared to the this tiny speck of earth in the beak of the bird. So, um, but we need to to be able to absorb this and to drink it in and and to give thanks for this. Uh, is we need a path. We need a path of purification. It can happen like lightning, you know, out of the blue also. We can have these moments and we all do. And every, you know, good person, every mu'min has these moments of illumination and, and suddenly, you know, oh my God, Allah's mercy, Allah's truth, the haq is, is so glorious, you know, and, and astaghfirullah. Um, but usually to keep us in that way, we need a sacred path. So we, we have Islam. Within Islam is the path called Sufism generally. It's really the path of the deeper knowledge of, of Islam, the deeper knowledge of the heart. So without knowing ourselves, really, we cannot see the truth. I mean, we can see beautiful things. We can see beauty. And as I say, have these flashes of um, perception and unity, uh, maybe even with, with Allah, with God, um, with reality. But uh, we want to become the true human beings, the Sadiqs, the truthful ones. We want to become truth. So life is a path. And within that path, there's a 
even a more essential path, a more specific path. Um, so yes, all is true. But to see the truth, and that's what I'm saying, Hassan, is that um, to relate to the truth, uh, we need a path. So all of the great sacred paths are also those, Buddhism, Christianity, Judaism, um, you know, Vedanta, the Vedanta, all are seeking the truth and seeking to bring the seeker to merge into the truth. So all are valid, all are true. Um, and so we just have to keep going and look at the, the mercy. So I want to say here too, that the truth is all merciful. The, the truth is not just, you know, an abstract truth. There, there are levels and levels and levels and um, facets and facets like a petal of an infinite rose of light that keeps opening and open. We never come to the end of truth, of the discovery of the facets and faces of, of love and facets of truth. So um, how to orient ourselves? is to take a path to our Lord. That's the essential orientation. And I'm not saying everyone has to enter a, you know, a mystic path, but to be conscious of that, that every day is a path to God. Every moment is a path to God. Every moment there's so many revelations come into our heart and we have a choices, you know. So our day is also a series of what, appear on certain level like choices. So if we're conscious of Allah and we're conscious of ourself being abd, servant of Allah, servant of the truth, then in our day, we will make these choices and choose always that path, you know, of being servant of striving to apply what Allah has taught us. Um, you know, kindness, very essential kindness. So we might miss our prayers, our salat, but if we're kind, uh, that counts even more than doing those outer devotions perfectly. As we know, there's an outer aspect and an inner, and um, Islam is very conscious of that, of the outer and the inner. So the outer might not be reflecting the inner. Uh, Christianity too, Judaism too, I mean, every sacred path makes that distinction. So what we want is sincerity of heart. So how to become sincere is, um, it's a lifelong journey. And we begin, so I'm giving like a kind of path because truth doesn't go without a path. There's not just truth and then, you know, that's it. <laughs> no, part of the truth is that the human being has a life, a breath and a path to the truth, a path to unveil itself or herself or himself as the truth. And that's what we seek, joined with the truth, merged in the truth, and uh, to come to our source. Because Allah is, we can't find Allah outside. Yes, we do, of course, find Allah outside, but the fullness of the revelation of our God is from within the heart. So we must go there and polish the mirror of the heart through speaking truthfully, acting truthfully, um, you know, thinking good thoughts, not judging, very important principle, not to judge, not, uh, you know, to, um, and the mind is a, a judger, it's an evaluator, so that's part of its function. But what happens is when it joins with grief in our heart, with, mm. Um, self-abasement or all our painful experiences in life that we then cover over, like the kafur, we cover them over and we become angry, we become resentful, um, we become doubted and we turn away and we harm, we hurt others' hearts, uh, then it, yes, it's a serious situation. So that's when we need to take a path to reflect to look inside, to be able to accept all our own shortcomings and errors and totally humbled, but we never are humbled without the 
infinite ocean of divine mercy. So it's never like a humbling that is just crushing or, you know, uh, debasing. It's a humbling that amazingly enough finds itself completely loved. And the more we take cognizance of our humbleness and servanthood, uh, lowliness, the more we will feel the flood of divine mercy, the more Allah will lift us, in fact. And then there will, you know, our spirits can ascend uh, as our part of our nefs descends and then the spirit ascends. So, you know, these are just tiny little glimpses of the process. So there's always, pro life is a process. It's nothing static. It's nothing we just conceive of. Life is not a conception. It's a living mm -hmm. experience. The truth is experienced. It's not a conception. So Allah says, you know, if you, by loving me, by, by fulfilling what I ask you, and by even more devotion, I become the eye, the tongue, with which you speak, the eye with which you see, the ear with which you hear, the hands with which you grasp, the feet with which you walk. That's called, that's the truth. That's when the one has become a Sadiq, merged in the truth, merged in Allah, merged in their Lord. It doesn't mean they will not make errors. So it's not like we're some people become some kind of crystal structure, but the, the essence, yes, is a crystal or a diamond structure, but the rest is the divine play in our nefs, in our soul of desire and sadness and sweetness, like a music, like a symphony, you know, or like a musical air. We, we, um, everything is richer and more beautiful and more tender and subtle. And, and then, yes, we, we make eras and then we repent. Um, it's part of the life. So, we become even more fluid, let's say, in the hands of Allah. We take on, as it said, the colors of the beloved. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, you know, repentance is very sweet to, to the beloved. So mm -hmm. when we turn, and that's why it's said that in the mystic past, they tell stories, you know, of the one who uh, makes error and then repents. And that's even sweeter to Allah's heart than um if they had done perfectly what they were enjoined to do. Um, this is just a, a tiny, tiny taste. Of... Oh, no, this is incredible. Thank you so much, uh, you Sayyidah Sheikh. Um, um, I wanted to, um, it's very profound what you say, of course, that um, truth isn't just, isn't this abstract notion. It's something that is lived. It's something that is experienced. It's something that is, um, that manifests itself through us, as it were, through our being. Um, and, uh, and this is, of course, um, strikingly, uh, it's worth um, perhaps reminding ourselves, strikingly different from the modern, shall we say, historically Western notion, but which has been spread throughout the world of coming through famously Descartes, who famously and famously said, I think, therefore I am, that to be is to think. Mm -hmm. and, and truth becomes some sort of mental exercise and, 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 and we've become these um, excessively and increasingly so it seems to me these um, uh, almost like a, a lollipop um, with a big head and a very small sort of body <laughs> and um, you know it's, it's just it's, 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 it can't be held um, and, and I, I wanted but become the hell yeah no true well the the process of a true path to god is coming from here <laughs> with yeah. as we know it's it's also the a shaitanic place the 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 point of the shaitan i always like to say that after yes. mentioning yes. that yes. name yes. um was arrogance yes and and the point of adam was humbleness, yeah. humbleness. And, and so, yes, we have been in an age of arrogance, extreme arrogance, yeah. you know. I mean, we always had the arrogance, of course, since the time of Cain and Abel. I mean, it's an element yes. in the human soul. But, you know, at certain times or others, it, 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 it gets put in its place. 
And then at other times it becomes like um, an idol, something great, you know, to succeed in the world, to achieve, to be wealthy, super wealthy, to be famous, um, to have a lot of people looking at you and following you, a lot of followers. Um, you know, there was a sheikh, uh, this is a story and I don't recall names, but it, it happened around in the, Ottoman times, or let's say Anatolian Sufism, where, um, you know, so many sheikhs with the big turbans, yes. um, and he was given the divine mission. He received it when he said, you have to go, God said to him, to Istanbul, and take all their crowns off their head and throw oh. them in the river, in the Bosporus, I mean, and that's what he did, you know, so um, that's what we have to do. And Rumi says, I only trust a, a head that's rolling on the ground. What does that oh, mean? No. That's the head that's been severed. In fact, that's an image in Sufism. And, but it's not just an, it's an image of a reality that happens, mm. that we get our head cut off. Musa Ferfendi, Rahmatullah, had a dream in which Imam Ali, <laughs> may his soul be brightened, his countenance illumined, ennobled was cut his head off with his sword Dulfikat. so you know we all have to leave our head mm. and make that that hijra that migration from the head to the heart and of course i you know in your i mean the head has been like a fortress of we go there because the why the heart's vulnerable the heart gets hurt mm. the heart is humbled and uh, if we have uh, families or societies, particularly who teach, you can't show your vulnerability, you can't show really your inner humanity, you have to be successful and powerful and strong and look like you know everything and think you know everything, then there, there's no place like that but the head. <laughs> the head thinks it knows everything and it's quite <laughs> pleasing. It's, it, it strikes me as being a very, uh, a sort of hyper-masculine, archetypally a very hyper-masculine mode of being. Sure. That, that's true too. I mean, um, that's true too, that it has gone along with a, you know, a male formulation of that kind of power and, and um, possession. Possess imagine, I mean, imagine that we come, not the Near East, but the Europe, and you're in Europe right now, comes from uh, uh, societies that thought they had the right to go around the world, conquer something, a place, a people who've been living there and that Allah gave them all of those place and resources and, and just take over and, you know, take the resources. Of course, the extreme of that is also to enslave the people and take them away. But it, it, it was an economic enslavement to it. So yeah, we don't need to dwell excessively on that because we, what we want to do is to move from that. So even though, uh, you know, empire, empire still exists. I'm, I'm in an empire right now. And, um, but, you know, the main focus is the empire of ourself. Is mm. it that, and that's the real path. So we can talk as much as we like about the evils of mm. empire, but unless we can come to that and, and, and in ourself, uh, it's just empty words, really. Mm. And we're projecting frustration and all of that on the outside. It's only really when we will conquer that empire of ourself uh, with, through, through Allah's power and love and allow that to flow into our being that um, the empires will crumble. They will crumble. So that's why it says love is the strongest. You know, love is the strongest. And through love, through people being kind to each other, reaching out, helping each other. And there's so many good examples of that. We're in, you know, it looks like we're in the worst of times. We're in an amazing time. And mm -hmm. where people are waking up and, and starting to live. Many, many people are starting to live, even not necessarily guided by the sacred paths themselves. But of course, sacred paths have permeated our consciousness mm -hmm. for generations, centuries. So we are really acting uh, through the, the, you might say, the guidance, the revelations to, to all of the prophets and mothers. 
and um, and and doing good, doing good on the earth. Uh, that's you know one of my little hobbies is um, gardening and and seeking ways of um, restoring the earth through you know permaculture, getting away from all the poisons and. Um, and harming things. So it's, it's also completely fits in with a gentle way of life on earth. Uh, walk softly, the Quran says, walk softly on the earth. Well, that's part of it. Walking softly is again, first of all, walking as an ab, as a servant of Rahman, mm -hmm. and then treating everything with gentleness, including the earth. So, and, and there we connect to Native American traditions. So the Native American traditions are so valuable also for us now because they preserved that relationship to, to sky, to, to earth, you know, to, to each other, all my relations, the, the importance. We saw a beautiful film the other night, my husband and I on, um, I have to get the name of it for you. Um, it's called um, Down to Earth, I think. Now, there are several movies with that title, but this is the story of a, Euro a European family who felt all of a sudden empty, which is what's happening to many of us. And that's a cause for turning to God. Where all of a sudden we feel our life is meaningless or empty or what's the point of it all? And so their journey took them uh, to... Uh, live on the earth naturally for completely off the grid, I think for maybe four years. <clears throat> but then they met a native elder, uh, American native elder. And then from there, they went on a journey seeking what they called the, um, maybe the guardians of the earth. Or, but these were people of wisdom and they met one in Africa. Amazing. I think in Namibia or, um, or Kenya, Kenya, I think he was in Kenya, a native elder with a group who was um, said, you know, they asked him the question like you're asking. And they asked him, you know, like, what, 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 what is your teaching or what, what makes uh, this place so, so thriving, the people so happy? And then he started to talk and say, it's, it's love, it's our relationships. So human relationships are at the core also of our happiness. I mean, the core core is our heart and it's our relation to God, to the truth, which dwells here, of course. I point up and that's okay too, because we know there's seven heavens, the throne, and but really Allah has placed Allah here in us. We are the vessel. It, that's why we're the microcosm. Of, um, of creation, I mean, the macrocosm. As Fendi said, we're called the micro, we're really the macrocosm. Mm. From us, everything comes, mm. all the form. The human being, the primordial Adam, Eve, is the primordial form for all of creation. So mm. everything comes. And, you know, there's a beautiful mystic description of the prophet, peace be upon him, of Muhammad, the praiseworthy, um, in which... Um, it's described all of the essences, the, as we know, from his light came the throne, the pen, the, the tablet, the angels, the stars, the earth's humanity. So there is a concept in mystical Islam of a primordial human being. So for Adam, is, it's said to be the primordial human being, Adam, Eve. When I speak Adam, it's Adam, Eve uh, for... Um, for the earth, for the earthly self. And the prophet, peace be upon him, is the primordial, even more primordial, mm -hmm. um, human for all creation, all levels, angelic and divine. So, you know, we to, if all of a sudden we come in touch with these ideas, it's like a fragrance of the rose. And we say, oh my God, it's so different from the relativistic, you know, that we just evolved from, you know, uh, monkeys and not that mon monkeys are, are wonderful and they're amazing. <laughs> All creation is so amazing. Ibn Arabi says, if only you knew the greatness of the gnat, the gnat, you know, that little thing that we call 
No, mm -hmm. Sheikh Noor would never kill anything. Oh, wow. Well. Mosquitoes bite him because oh. he, he had oh. so much reverence for this form of life, for divine life, for Allah in all Allah's forms. That, um, so, you know, not don't step on an ant if you can, you know, or whatever, wherever we should be bringers of good and mercy. This is all part of Allah's family. So, um, but, you know, we've been, and this is what I see in myself, my own journey, I, you know, went through the normal set of educational steps and finally in college came to a course on uh, in social, social biology or, you know, and, and after a point, I, it would just like, no, this is enough. I'm getting mm -hmm. out of, I'm not going to remain in this field of, it's almost like self abasement mm. of the human being. And who knows, you know, maybe there are elements of that where it's like, uh, I'm not going to think of myself and other human beings in this way. And so I knew that my path was to be uh, with the mystics. I was always drawn to the mystics and the mystics of every path really speak the same language. Uh, mm. So, um, to see the human being as the heart of God, the human being as the Khalif, you know. So it, it doesn't mean arrogance because now in the normal, you know, field of ecology and although it's changing rapidly, but at, for a certain time, maybe 10 years ago, the human was like the worst, <laughs> you know, if only the world could be without the human being, everything would flourish. This is not the mystic teaching. The human brain is the one who brings the Rahman into creation and makes mm -hmm. all flourish. But of course, we can also be the, the devil side, you know, if we allow that side to become uppermost. So it's, we have a huge, I mean, huge is not even big enough a word, mm -hmm. responsibility, an essential eternal responsibility of to be in this human form, to give gratitude for being born in this form with, with the heart of Allah, the Rahman, with the throne here, you know, with the mind that can think and become beautiful when it becomes a mirror for the pure heart, with hands, with feet, with faculties to be able to speak, to be able to hear and see, you know, Allah's beauty. It's immense and not, and we need to put emphasis on that instead of mm. all this heavy, heavy overload. So, you know, I know one of your questions, well, you know, you can ask it if you want, maybe formulate it. For, oh, sure. No, for no. Our group. No, no, so I. Um, About the society and all these. Yes, yes. No, no. Yeah. Thank you so much for, for all that. Um, I mean, uh, something that struck me, uh, many things struck me about everything you just said, um, about uh, the human being being the heart of God, which is a, a radical, uh, radically different from how things are, are, are put forward these days to these sort of highly secularized modes of looking at things. You know, the human being, uh, you mentioned, Sheikha, about uh, through your own uh, educational journey, through college and things like that, feeling that it was a basing of, of the human being. Yeah. Now, this narrative is so prevalent now that, you know, the human being is the problem. You know, the reason why the, the, the planet is is, is yeah. going to, to, you know, going to hell basically, we're destroying right. it's because yeah. there are too many people and, and many very, some very serious, very powerful people think, you know, yeah. we need fewer people in the world. And yet this is completely contradictory as oh, you know, really. to, to the Islamic notion, to all the traditional notions, yeah. right? That the, the human being in, in the Quranic narrative, as you, as you mentioned, is we are the caliphs of God. We are literally God's representative in this world. It's through us that goodness comes into the world. And you mentioned very powerfully that we're not the microcosm. We are the macrocosm. It's yeah. through us and because of us that everything comes about, yeah. which is a radical departure. Radical. From, and, and what uh, we have now, uh, Sheikha, with uh, um, the, the, the sort of, the illusory and false nature of things where how things are um, put forward. Um, so on the one hand, we're, we're, we're seen in these very lowly debased, uh, in a very debased sense. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, the, the technologies that surround us, which are, on the one hand are extremely, uh, can be very beneficial. The fact that I'm speaking with you live 
you know, exactly. in the UK while you're in, in, in New York. It's, a, it's miraculous or, or in some real sense. Yeah. Uh, but at the same time, these same technologies, more often than not, mm. are being used for incredibly um, harmful purposes and ends. And yes. you know, the human being, um, to my mind, so I'm not going to go on and on here, but uh, we're, kind, we're being reduced to these images, right? We're, we're literally computer technologies exist now that can create human beings completely lifelike, utterly lifelike, visual representations of human beings who literally don't exist. <laughs> like, I mean, I've seen pictures of these. Really? And, 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 and if, if I didn't, if the article, if the text didn't exist with the article, you just assume these are real human beings, pictures yeah. of them. And, and this is just the beginning. And this is just the stuff that is out in the public domain. They right. can literally make any person, even dead, long dead, they can animate them and, and make them say stuff that they've never said. I mean, right. where, where, what I want to ask you, dear Sheikha, is um, for my benefit and for everyone's benefit is, while on the one hand, we always know that the divine mercy pervades everything and we are mm -hmm. in that sense always all right mm -hmm. uh, at the same time there is the sort of uh, on, on the worldly plane in sort of in, in, in temporal terms um, there are, there is a lot of awfulness happening and and I, I, I genuinely worry as to where we're going yeah. um, and, and if you yeah. can speak to some of these things the the, the, the technological uh, so-called advancements right via, via AI technologies and things like that mm -hmm. um, anyway so uh, mm -hmm. if that... I, I, I agree with you Hassan we're, we're on a cusp you know I mean maybe we're always on the cusp really but you know we always have that choice which way to go but today it's almost as though, yes, as though we could hasten very quickly the end of this creation. And, and, and it's almost like the Gog and Magog coming, you know, mm. through these um, great um, scientific, you know, advancements. But if, if it's in the hands of people who are less than pure, or less than that they evolved. Yes. If they're not evolved sufficiently, then yeah, you could say we, we can get in big trouble. So, um, and, you and know. A lot of these, sorry, sorry to yeah. interrupt, Shaker, but Go a lot ahead. of these technologies are created by and uh, spread by people who have very uh, negative intentions. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they're very powerful people. They have a lot uh -huh. of wealth, a lot of resources. Yeah, that's very true. So, you know, um, that's really the arc. Mm. So we, as people uh, conscious, you know, we must pray. We, mm. we, we, this is, again, one of these divine gifts and obligations as a human being. We have to pray and we have to pray for the good. We have to ask Allah's forgiveness for ourselves, our families, our communities and all beings, all humanity. I mean, only humanity needs forgiveness, uh, actually. So, um, you know, so prayer is a great answer to this dilemma. And mm -hmm. you're absolutely right. I mean, I, we're even probably protected from seeing the worst of the intentions. We'd be so terrified what they have in mind for us, you know, like, you know, sure, we know. I mean, it, it's, uh, it's shaitanic. Let's let's say that we can say that and offend and we have to, right? and so, so, so forgive me for uh, it, no. Occasion. It's good. It's a dialogue. No, but, it's well, a dialogue. No, I, I absolutely in 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 agreement with you because sometimes what happens um, again in these sort of modern secular liberal uh, fora very often we're not allowed to say things like demonic or evil. <laughs> no, no, it's and yet, true. if we don't, if we strip our language, uh, if we yeah. if we take away from our language these very important theological dimensions, right. how do we call, it's, it's very paradoxical, right? Uh, where on the one hand, the, the sort of, the, the famous argument against God is, well, if, if there were, were a God, then why is there evil in the world? Right. So, so, so by raising that question, now we now supposedly there is no evil in the world. Right. It's, and but anyway, sorry. It's, yeah, uh, yeah. No, that's you're right. All, all of the, in fact, humanity right now is, as you say, us. I'm faced with all these paradigms of, you know, that can be very, very confusing. And so that's why we have to go to the original paradigm, which is in the heart, 
and that's why a path to the heart is, let's say, the Noah's Ark. It's like today, Noah's Ark is taking a path to the heart. And all mm -hmm. those people from whichever, um, you know, river of revelation, they come. And, and that's another thing we wanted to address in our talk today. Uh, we cannot anymore make the division between religions. It's one religion with many facets, with mm -hmm. many chambers. You know, you go into those old cathedrals and there was the main body of the cathedral, which you might say is the root of the tradition in the human mm -hmm. heart. And then there are all these different, um, you know, like cupolas or, or chambers. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, so, we have to see it that way. And Sheikh Noor was a great model for that. But mm -hmm. let's go back still and address yes. what we have perceived as very, very negative energy. In 1980, Effendi was in New York and he was in our house in, in the city. And he always, you know, he would every now and then go into kind of like a state or something. And where he would see, be shown something uh, mm -hmm. that was not just present. And, um, and so he said, yeah, that humanity is on a precipice. That's 1980. Mm -hmm. And he said, he, because he was seeing things that were so dark and negative. And he was saying that the shaitan has, is just sitting back now. That's what he said. It was an expression, of course, because human beings are like racing ahead into, negative things, you know, so, mm -hmm. um, so, yes, but we cannot be obsessed with that. In fact, Sheikh Noor hardly ever spoke of Shaitan. He did, rarely, oh. but we have to focus on the good, and this is another mm -hmm. very important element, because I myself, sometimes I'm drawn exactly as you've spoken of just, you know, saying, oh my god, what are they doing over there? What all those negative people, you know, trying to harm us with a million things, including viruses and everything. Um, and uh, chemicals on our earth, instead of growing things, Allah has created this earth rich and abundant. We don't need mm. all the chemical fertilizers, chemical pesticides. If we go back to the forms of growing with prayer and, you know, bringing goodness to the soil, enriching the soil, mm -hmm. everything will grow. Yes, we'll have a few pests eating this and that. It's not going to be a devastation if we, you know, protect it through prayer and all of that. So that's one thing. But the main thing, so we have to turn our gaze from yes. being obsessed. And many of the, you know, modern forums talk about that. So now, um, you know, they can see evil in any form. I mean, whether in any form, At one point it was communism and I'm not saying communism is great. It was definitely not great experiment, but whatever it is, we have to turn our focus and look at the good, mm. Abaru, the good. And there's a beautiful expression. I, I read it the other day in our Juma uh, from a Hadith Qudsi, which for those of you who are not familiar, it's one of the sayings of God, like a revelation, it came to the prophet's heart, um, but it was not included in the Quran. So, um, you know, we, the people of the book, of, of all sacred books, so it's all the books, all the Upanishads, the Vedas, uh, uh, you know, Bhagavad Gita, all the holy, holy books, the, the Torah, the, um, the Quran, the Injil, the, the Gospels. Um, so this says, uh, if you have not uh, seen the good, it's your responsibility. Mm. That the good is everywhere. Yes. And so it's our responsibility to see the good, as we said before, to see the truth, to be the truth. So focusing on the good, and that comes, so how do we do that? By turning our lives to goodness, to helping others. So we're more concerned, we're, we don't think and worry so much about mm. all what they're doing over there mm. and uh, you know, figuring out all these AI ways of taking over the world or whatever and going then to the moon or whatever. No, 
we focus on helping people. We mm. focus on our prayer. We focus on Allah, asking Allah's mercy into our life and love and that we become people of love and mercy and kindness. And we do good. We become doers of good mm. and seekers of good from Allah. And we, we sit in meditation. We, we repeat divine names or we chant Quran or, or whatever it might be, even without chanting Quran, if we're doers of good. Alhamdulillah, that's how we transform our lives. And then we will not be, it, it makes like truly a zone, a field, a force field of protection, mm -hmm. prayer, remembrance of God uh, in all the traditions, no, no matter what tradition we're in, we, we have those, you know, whole bodies of, of prayers to offer and, and chant, chanting and meditations. That's where we should focus really. And as you say, these liberal, that's the problem. The universities uh, are sources of the head. They're basically head schools. <laughs> they teach you how to stay in the head, be in the head, succeed in the head, over overcome everybody else in the head, you know, stuff for love. So the mystic schools are places of the heart, of humbleness, of being one with everybody, seeing everybody as one family and, and trying to help that family. Yeah, alhamdulillah. And not, you know, making, I mean, you know, we went through our four years of, <laughs> I mean, we're still in those four, I mean, those four years have gone 400 years. I mean, basically, as we were speaking before with the colonial temperament and the arrogance and all, we're not out of it at all. If not anything, we're just going into that aspect deeper. So all the more we have to pull on the other mm -hmm. side to make these places, communities of prayer, prayer in our family, make a shrine in our homes, you know, set a space aside, that's very important. Um, so here, you know, I have, this is my bedroom here in um, Long Island actually. And um, where, you know, you it, it, as soon as you walk into that place, ah, you feel prayer. I mean, uh, as Muslims, we have prayer carpets or if we're Shia, we have the place of earth, but, make it bigger, make a chamber. You can devote a whole room or even a corner of a room. Prayer, goodness, uh, walking softly on the earth, kindness to others, uh, good thoughts, not judging. It's so hard not to judge and that's a, a struggle. It's a real struggle. We have, that's the jihad. We have to undertake that jihad to purifying the heart, coming to the truth in the heart. So alhamdulillah. And, Tasting the truth. We are the truth. So not feel like we're far. We're right there already, but we don't see it. That's the difference. We're already the truth. Allah has created us as truth, in truth, in love. But it's our mind that is blocking the way. We can, the mind cannot accept, you know, what the heart knows. It was evident, self-evident to the heart. The mind feel well, that's not because the mind is built on certain structural principles that can't see that. And so it, in a way, it, it's that little grain of sand in front of the eye prevents us from seeing the truth. Thank you so much, Shikha. Um, so, so many things um, come to mind. One, one thing that, <clears throat> one of the many things that really, struck me um, when I had the great blessing of visiting you and, and uh, the Durga in, in New York a couple of times was just the, um, the space is filled with, permeated with love. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was hoping you could speak a little bit, you've touched upon the, the, the theme of love a little bit throughout today. If you could yeah. speak a little more to, 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 this, uh, mm -hmm. to this very important concept where it's not only, um, love is, is not, just some sort of romanticized mm -hmm. sentimental thing. It's, it's actually a mode of being yes. and acting and interacting with one another. If, if you could yes. kind of speak a little bit to that, please. Yes, I'd love to. Um, so, you know, love, we're, we're created in love for love. Allah said, I was a hidden treasure and I longed to be known. So there's the love, Allah's own longing to bring out from Allah's heart, uh, the light, and then we some of the mystics, some mystics use, use it creation as a mirror in which the beloved gazes mm. and finds pleasure. So, you know, that's one one way. But these are all metaphors, of course. But 
the, the deeper meaning is that we are that we are that we are that love and but and once we taste it you know we will be restless mm -hmm. until we come to the source of that love so um yes the path is is love to uncover that love in ourself and you know when a child is born oh it's an explosion of love or when we see, meet our beloved our partner an explosion of love or if we meet our mystic guide is an explosion of love. So, um, but to cultivate, that's where it comes. You know, these are Allah's like, when springtime comes, you know, everybody's a believer when the buds and the flowers it's come up. Uh, <laughs> but it's, you know, then going to fall and winter, you know, how do we cultivate love to um, support it and to maintain it? And this is what, a mystic community can do before it was done maybe in families. Um, mm. But, you know, since the family structure for many, many reasons has been so uh, un unhinged, um, we, you know, we rely on mystic communities and also families have other, they're, you know, it's like a biological full of love, but its purpose is also to spread Yes, uh, beautiful ideas, beautiful genes, and all of that into uh, the future. But a mystic community's sole purpose mm -hmm. is to have the one who enters that family know themselves mm -hmm. and know their Lord. So the sole purpose. And you cannot know yourself or know your Lord without knowing love and living in love. It would be, it's a contradiction, let's say, to really have knowledge, have the haq uh, without the wadud, without the ishq, without the love. Um, mm. You know, I'm not saying there's states of perception of divine light being so blinding, uh, but that's love. That's mm. just an intense expression of love. So um, I'm hearing some hammering. Let me just <laughs> close yes, the door so uh, we can be a little more quiet here. Yes, Let's yes. see. Let's see if that helps. Yeah, I think I think it's going to help. So, um, oh, thank you so much. Yeah, love, I mean, you know, and then you encounter the masters of love. Uh, Effendi, Musafir Effendi was a master of love. I mm. mean, uh, you know, you could not help uh, but fall in love right. and in his presence. And and then the path is love. It's a, the the path of love back to the beloved through the heart of love. Uh, and as we say, I mean, I point up, it's just a metaphor, the, the heaven, it's really in here in the heart. Um, so, and then there are the lovers, there are those, of course, there are different temperaments of humanity, not everybody will want to take the path of love, and some mm -hmm. take the path of a, a more difficult path, which are those paths of arrogance and dominance, and that's a path to God. Oh, Everything is a path to God. So, mm -hmm. and when they meet God, you know, they will receive what they desire from the mm -hmm. beloved. And, uh, but they might not see it in a way as love. So that, but that's a whole other, mm -hmm. you know, ultimately everyone is in mercy and is happy. Everyone, even the worst perpetrators. Uh, mm -hmm. That's the teaching of the highest mystic, uh, Ibn Arabi. And so I follow, you know, he's called the Sheikh al Um, And uh, he interprets really the, the knowledge of Rasulullah. Everything, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, everything needs interpretation. Rasul, the Rasul, peace be upon him, was the interpreter of Quran, you know, through his life, through Hadith, um, through his successors or his family, the, uh, the 12 Imams, you know, they were all interpreters of this grand revelation, interpreters of life and revealing something of, of Allah. And so uh, the Sheikh al Akbar is the interpreter of the Prophet and of Quran. So he said, ultimately, the, you know, what's called the fire of, of you know, purification uh, will become uh, cool 
and become delightful for those dwellers. So that's another surprising opening, you know. So we have to imagine everyone in this universe will be uh, over taken care for by the All Merciful One, by Rahman. And so who are we to be making judgments, you know? And, mm. and the whole thing, are you a Muslim? Are you not a Muslim? Are you a believer or not? We don't know. We don't know any of this. Uh, all, all we told to know is our heart and Allah, mm -hmm. who is unknowable ultimately too. But <laughs> Allah is knowable, but it says there's the reality. Ibn Arabi speaks of that. He says, you know, there's what's known, what has been revealed to us through the haq, and that we have in the divine names, divine safat, and the Quran, all the sacred revelations, the Torah, the Injil, etc. Uh, and then there's um, what we know we can't know. And then he said, there's a level where we don't even know that we don't know, you know. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> so we're... <laughs> We'll be wrapping up shortly. I wanted yes. to ask you, um, yes, Sheikh Noor. Yes, about Sheikh Noor, and um, also, um, I, I, I didn't mean to interrupt Sheikh, just because I uh, oh, go ahead, go ahead. We have we, more time. <laughs> I have, I, I, yeah, I can go. Let's go on a little bit if you want. Yeah, a little bit. Uh, thank you so much. Um, I, I was asked, wanted to ask you about Sheikh Noor and also at the end, if you could, uh, uh, you know, just a short prayer to, to bless us. And, oh, okay. Oh, and, and, but, um, um, and, and really, I, I wanted to sort of emphasize for myself and to everyone listening that um, it's such a great, I mean, again, language is very weak. It's an incredible um, privilege for us and, and an honor and blessing to have you. Um, speak with us today on, on the mm. Dust Commons podcast and really uh, no exaggeration. I know you mentioned Sheikh out of your um, uh, beautiful humility, not to sort of uh, not to sort of say anything excessive about you, but I don't think it's. I know it's not excessive. <laughs> you're the most um, significant person, important person to to kindly give their time to us, and it's a tremendous blessing. Um, but um, uh, before we we get onto the prayer um, to to bless to bless us um, about Sheikh Noor and his career, um, he he to my mind. Uh, uh, um, really, he's a very uh, unusual and very important human being insofar, not only, but um, uh, certainly as far as his very lived experiential um, mm -hmm. appreciation of the different mm -hmm. traditions. It wasn't just this theoretical thing, which often, all too often happens. Mm -hmm. he, um, not only was he, of course, a Sufi master, um, he also uh, was a, a, a part of the Eastern Orthodox uh, tradition mm -hmm. um, and, and he practiced Eastern Orthodoxy. He also um, practiced and was initiated in, in Buddhism and mm -hmm. he also was instructed in, in um, Hindu uh, mm -hmm. uh, prayer and meditation through some great masters. So a very unusual human being and to my mind, uh, his significance um, and uh, as 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 a being and what he brought yeah. to the world is only in more and more important as time goes right. by. Yeah. So I was sort of hoping you could speak a little bit to to that. Yes. Uh -huh. well, you know, there's a book coming out which we called um, "Living Open Space" by Sheikh Mohammed Jamal, who was a disciple of his and mm -hmm. uh, working together. You know, uh, mm -hmm. on on the book, but he he uh, brought in all the places of Noor's involvement in other traditions. Um, this is Noor's book, "Atom mm -hmm. from the Sun of Knowledge." Lexics and Noor al Jarahi, that, um, you know, which were over, I think, 12 uh, Ramadans that he wrote on, on Quran, Sunnah, and Hadith, and, and then his own ecstatic uh, poems. So I'll, I thought I'd read you something, but um, yes, I do feel he's a guide for modern times. I mean, he's a, a model for. Islam also, just as every saint comes in a time, but is really a path to the future, you know, mm -hmm. just like artists are that way. Artists help us see and, and, and be able to live and sense in a way that helps us as, as life unfolds, each in their bringing new knowledge. Um, 
So um, I, I wanted to read you um, this. Um, this is a section on Hadith. Yes. And uh, the, the title is Bismillah. I'll just read a, a paragraph. Yes, please. Um, Bismillah. Through beginning each action, taking each step and breath, following each train of thought and formulating each intention with Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, in the name of Allah, all compassionate and all merciful, the dervish lovers who gaze into the mirror of spiritual dream will see that their heads have disappeared into graceful flames. Mm. It's actually a, a dream he had when he, the first time he spent time with Sheikh Musafir, he slept at the foot of Sheikh Musafir's bed. He stayed six days in Spring Valley in what was then the, the early Tekka um, and under Sheikh uh, Tosin Vaidak. Uh, and Noor slept in Effendi's pajamas. Effendi gave him his pajamas and he didn't leave. He came to Spring Valley just for a visit to see Sheikh Musafir and he stayed for six days, um, which he later likened to the six days of creation for, mm -hmm. for his heart, you know. Yes. So in the dream, one morning he woke up and he saw flames coming out of his head. And so yes. that was... Um, a confirmation mm. of you know re divine revelation being given just like Moses alayhi salam saw God in the fire or heard God. The musical cry, Bismillah Rahman Irahim, would then resound from the entire being of the dervishes and fill the universe. From the shining eyes of such persons, tears of love will fall like huge raindrops upon the white marble floor of the Grand Mosque in the Medina of the heart. The mercy and compassion of Allah will flow through the open channel of such persons with great subtlety, gentleness, and profusion. Each thought, perception, and action occurs no longer simply in the name of Allah's mercy, but as the very mercy of Allah. Mm. This is why the holy and tender prophet, upon him be peace, is honored as the mercy of Allah to all the worlds. He actually became Bismillah. He mm. breathed only Bismillah. He slept and ate, walked and talked only through and as Bismillah Rahman Irahim. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> yeah, Alhamdulillah. So that's Noor. You know, that's Noor. I mean, and mostly that's it. He didn't teach by, you know, so much hitting people or talking about, you know, uh, how bad they were. You have to be good. Or, no, he simply exuded this same thing mm -hmm. that he saw and received from the Prophet of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he exuded it and he saw in his beautiful visions uh, that he shared, you know, in his presence and his talks and his books. So let's plunge together, all together, all human beings who have a heart of love and a desire to be with Allah, Let's just plunge into these wells of beauty. And Islam is in all the traditions, you know, so filled with the mystics. Let's read our mystics and plunge and, and ask to walk the path of our life with our mystics from all, all, all paths, all traditions. Um, thank I'm you so much, Sheikh. Um, well, um, that this is been truly a, an honor and, and tremendous blessing and oh thank you really and to me Hassan thank no, you're, you're very kind and, and very no humble. I mean to be invited to share with others of uh, people of heart isn't that so great isn't it so great to gather in 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 his name or her name if we address yes, the yes, divine yes. mother but no, absolutely, and uh, I mean, the, which would potentially take me to another question on the importance of the divine feminine. But uh, yeah. I, I just wanted to say that uh, the Sheikh, uh, your in your incredible uh, kindness and, and generosity and mercy, I, I really 
I'm, I'm sure I'm not the only person who felt this, but uh, one see, one really tastes and and experiences uh, really the divine feminine mercy in the world. And and this is really, in my humble opinion, is what is really what we need today. And um, I was uh-huh. hoping, Sheikh, if you could um, leave us with a prayer and uh, and please bless uh, bless our project, uh, our humble project, our aim. With this humble project is to um, really uh, be a space for open discussion uh, mm. about uh, matters of the heart, about matters of religion, mm. and mm. and 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 dealing with some of the um, in, in more heady concerns as well, some of the intellectual concerns yes. you mentioned before about people. It's, it's a question of people's disposition, so different people mm-hmm. come to things mm-hmm. differently. But uh, but ultimately, of course, uh, you know, my, our intention is to. Is to serve God and to to serve um, mm. the, the saints and prophets and and to serve humanity um, mm. with How your and, What a beautiful uh, intention! So I begin by, oh Allah, please bless our brother Hassan and his beautiful intentions and uh, beautify his intentions and 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 make them be realized, oh Allah, and uh, bring us all together. Uh, in your love and, and bless Hassan's parents and family and relations and community here that are gathered um, through this program. Uh, bless us all in our lives by, by increasing the desire for you in our hearts and uh, by showing us things as, as they truly are as, as, as beloved Muhammad, peace be upon him, prayed, oh Allah, show me things as they truly are. And um, increase us in knowledge, Rabbi Zidni Ilmen, and increase us and decrease us not, honor us and abase us not, bestow upon us and deprive us not, choose us and choose not over us, be pleasing to us and be well pleased with us, and give us the good of this day and this life, and keep far away from us the evil of this day in this life, and um, and bless us with ever consciousness uh, toward you ever gratitude increases always in gratitude to you Allah make may we walk gently on the earth may we speak with tongues of gentleness and um, and may we see with with eyes of truth and and hear your your beautiful voice in our ears and may our, our minds be used to uh, for the good uh, as a servant may the mind become a servant of the heart O oh Allah and May we become more even creative as you are, the sublime creator. There is no creator as you, O oh Allah, and uh, that you have fashioned us in, in your image. And so illumine all that is good and that you love and, and remove from us all that you do not love in us, O oh Allah. And gather us together uh, under your gaze, under your loving kindness and the, the gaze of loving kindness and and, and bless us as humanity, those who've come before, those who are present on this holy earth now and those yet to come. And please may we fulfill, you know, the, the amina that, that has been given to humanity, the, the highest trust and, and covenant um, that, that we will uh, honor you and, and, uh, and honor each other and, and be the true mean Muslims and the true uh, Sadiqs and, and, and the true people of heart, O Allah, and the true uh, Ashiks, the true lovers of yours. Allah, grant us everything you love and remove from us what you do not love. May humanity turn toward you and, and release itself from the illusions of uh, entertainment, the illusions of all distractions and the illusion of... Of, of the mind saying that it can ever achieve greater things like the Tower of Babel, oh Allah, please, may we not construct that, may we live as your humble servants on earth and receiving the gifts that pour from your heavens and 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 rise up from your earth and um, I mean, and may we honor uh, the, those who've come before us, all the mystic masters, the prophets, all the prophets, may we join together in the great circle of love around this globe, recognizing that we are one being, one family, one reality. And, and may we rather enjoy the diversity that comes through 
the sacred paths and through each one of us individually. May we see each as a face of Allah rather than discard it or, or push it away, O oh Allah, and see it as other. Amin, amin, amin. Everything is yourself. Everything is you. Give us these eyes of, of the mystic lovers of God and always keep us under the cloak of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or whichever prophet or messenger that we adhere to and we are uh, receiving from most, most dearly and closely. And all the prophets and messengers are one. They are all, and mothers, they, they are truly one light. I mean, may we merge into that light. I mean, I mean, I mean, to the secret heart of our peers and may the children also, I, I have to continue for the children, bless our ancestors, our parents, our grandparents with great happiness and, and joy and fulfillment in you, Allah, and bless our children with safety and protection, protection from physical harm and protection from the harm that, that are addressed as, um, trying to lure them away from their true self. Oh Allah, may they be strong on the path of truth and, and, and strong as your khalifs and, and strong as your, your lovers and good to their parents and grandparents and uh, walk softly on the earth. Amin, amin, amin. May we all be in this one tribe of humanity, uh, successful, victorious, oh Allah. Oh, oh Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, tell the people that the victory of love is here. Amin, amin, Fatiha. Allahumma sayyana Sayyidina Muhammad, walani Sayyidina Muhammad, wa sabi wa sallam. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah, Rabbin Alameen, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, Maliki Yawmidin, Iyaka Nabudu, wa Iyaka Nasta'in, Ihdina Surat Al-Mustaqim, Surat Al-Adhina Anamta Alayhim, Qadr Maghdubi Alayhim, Waladdomeen, Ameen, Laila Illa Hu. Alhamdulillah. I was uh, truly um, very, very blessed and very thank special. You. Thank, and, you. Uh, thank you. I feel blessed too, really. And it's thank you. I'm sorry. And my love and, and greetings to all of you, Salam, who are here thank you. today. Thank you. May we truly form this mystic bond of hearts. And um, whether we meet or not meet in the flesh, but uh, working in the field of, of, of the beloved, of Rahman. Thank, thank you. Rahman. Thank you Please give my love and, and salams and best to everyone. And I will. I will, uh, Hassan. I give my support. Thank you again. Thank you. <laughs> God bless. Salamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuhu.